Hello and back again to the eighth part of programming with the Bitwig API and in this part we will look into settings and document states so how you can store different settings which configure your script in a Bitwig document or a global so the setting will be the same when you reload Bitwig or if you reload a project. Before that I wanted to show you also you remember you can pin a track which I showed in the previous track bank tutorial but in the last tutorial we also looked into devices and as you see we added a cursor device and this will now also appear in a studio IO panel and this can be also navigated like with the cursor track and this has also the possibility to pin the device so you see if I pin it it will stick to the polysyn so if I select now the filter it will still be the polysyn who will be controlled by the device device. So looking into settings and document states, they both can be created again from the controller host. So there is this function get preferences and get document state. And if we have a look into the API documentation, you will see that both object types are subclasses of settings. So settings provide you with a number of features to create these different widgets you can have. And talking about this widgets type, I can show you an example. If I activate here my Ableton push extension, there you will see if there are no settings visible, you can click here this icon and then the settings will show up. And here you see all the different possibilities which you have to create widgets. You can have drop down lists, which we are called enumerations. And enumerations have a different appearance. If you only have two entries in this list, they will appear as a button also up to three there will appear a buttons and after that you will get such a list there are also normal text fields which can be restricted to specific numbers you can also give a unit like this percentage here to these input text fields and you can also have simple button to execute a function for example here i reset to the default colors and this is also a nice widget to have that you have a color picker button but actually it's not a picker. You have to manually write down the color code. There is sadly no window appearing to choose a color from a color palette. These are the options you have. So how can you develop that now? Let's turn it off again. So currently with our Yamaha F script, we don't have any setting here. And we have these two types. So the global settings will appear here and the document specific settings will appear below our script. Again, also in the studio I open up. Looking at the API again, you see we have these different commands. So this get signal setting will create the simple button you saw for resetting a color. The number setting will give you a text input field, but it is restricted to numbers and you have a certain parameter so you can restrict the range of the values and also give a string for presenting a unit. This enum one is really powerful for creating the lists or range of buttons. And here you have a simple string field and this is for the color settings. And then there is also a new one now uh, for having a boolean setting but i would stay away from it because you can also do that with using an on off value for the enum setting and this one is still a bit buggy and i also noticed that it's currently not working at all for document states so better go with enum setting if you want to have a toggle field now we want to add some settings to our mox f code so i thought what can we do with that so for global preferences, I thought, why not store the mode? We can select it. If you remember the last part of the tutorial, we created two modes, one for the track mode and one for the device or parameters modes to control them. And so we get here with that line, we get the preferences from the host and store that in a variable. And with that variable, we can create such a setting. And the first one gives the name that appears for that setting and the second one gives you the option to group together different parameters which belong logically together for example if we go back here you see for example here I group together scales so all these settings have the same category namely scales or here I group session and so on and then here we need to give a list and we need to create this list as well so let that put up here we have this array with these two strings so track and device and 
and we will give here the whole list and this is the default selection so we select as a default the track so let's store that and let's see if that is already working if we go now here in the settings again you will see we have now this new setting so it worked we can select the device and track if we click now such a button we want also to change the mode and also if the user changes on the mox f the mode we also want to change it here so how is that done i did it like this this new setting we have here i will give that to our mode handler which manages our different modes we have created and in the mode handler we also need to put that here then as a new parameter we will store this parameter here in our class and what we now need to do is we want to monitor that setting so that the user changes the setting we also want to change the setting here in the mode handler we needed to add a value observer this is exactly the same value observer we also use for monitoring the volume or the parameters in the previous tutorials but i will show you a new trick with that here i use now here such a helper function which is called do object and this helper function does the following it wraps this this accessor so you can use the callback function you give in to that helper function like it was called in your object so this sounds very complicated but if you look at what this function will do it's the normal method which is part of our class so it needs to have access somehow to the this object and this helper function simply helps us that this is working here we loop over our options and check if the value we have matches this option and if this is the case we set the specific mode and we have to do this because the value does not give you an index like 0 1 2 3 and so on instead it gives you the text which you put into this list so here we get track or we get device so we need to also compare this to our list we had inserted in this setting to make this work so let's see if that works if we go back to bitwig we see here our setting if i click now device you will see our mode changes and if i click on track it will also change back to track mode so this direction is working already nicely but if i click on the box f it will not do anything I can change still the tracks on a mox f but it does not change here our state so if you remember here in our handle midi this is the place where we change the mode so we set here the mode to the first one or here to the second one so here we also need to use our setting and set the specific one we want to have so we have stored if you remember this mode setting into this variable so let's check that out as well if I now click on the mox f you will see also our global setting will adjust accordingly so if we close down now bitwig let's try that go back to settings click on controllers you will see we are back at the device mode and you have seen also the device mode got automatically activated and everything is like we expected to work so as an example for the document states i thought why not do fixed velocity so we can enable that we want to have have a fixed velocity when we play the keyboard and no dynamics for that we create two state variables the first one enables the fixed velocity and the second one gives the value so let's have a look at that one we create this enum with the fixed velocity we need also some options for that let's put them up here as well so these options are now boolean options so we have one value off and one value on and we will say here with these values the default should be that it's off so we have a normal velocity working and the second one is then a number which we want to have from 0 to 127 it goes in steps of one we don't want to have a unit because a unit doesn't make sense with velocity and our default value will be the full maximum velocity of 120 and 7 and you can also notice that i use the same category here i use both fixed velocity as a category so it will be grouped together in bitwig you will see now this fixed velocity box has appeared so it's grouped together and we will have our two variables the idea is now if i enable that that i only can play now with this maximum velocity of 127 but i can also set this velocity let's see what we need to do to make this work if you remember the midi 
and the node input is handled in our hardware class we created here. So for that we need to put in somehow these settings in here, give them access to the settings. So we create the hardware here and we have these two parameters we also need to have in the class. So we add the two settings here and now we need to use the two settings as before but we need to do more things. To make this work we need a velocity map as we learned in a previous node input tutorial and if it's off we need to have simply the identity map which says the input is the same as the output but if we want to have a fixed one we need to set the same number for the full array. So we create two maps both have 128 entries are initialized with minus one and for the identity map we can already create this array we can run over this 128 entries and set it to the same values and we, we need also to register two callback functions for if the user changes that setting here in a document the first one will be then setting the velocity and the second one needs to update the velocity map and you will see there is a difference here here I call a raw value observer and the difference is if I would use the value observer this would also work but the value observer gives you value between 0 and 1 and if we apply this to 0 to 127 you might get some rounding errors so that's why I want to have the raw values and the raw values gives us the raw numbers the normalized ones. So then we finally need to look at these two new functions and the first one sets the velocity map so again this will be a string a text this will be off and on so we need to compare this we compare it to the second one to on so if the value is on we will set this variable which we have up here so this is a class variable and this variable will then be checked if this is true we set the fixed velocity and if it's off we set the identity velocity map and the second one needs to update then the map if the user changes the fixed value so again we need to iterate over our, our map and set this value to this fixed new value and if our fixed value is enabled we need to set and update the velocity map that's basically it let's try if that works you see it's off we should have some dynamic let's load something up which gives you some velocity so you can hear it if it if i it has some velocity here and if i enable it now it will be always 127 maximum and i can also move it down you will see the velocity it will always be softer no matter how hard i hit it so this is working as well. You could now also put this feature on the Mox F, assign a button to it, and then if the user presses the button, you could also toggle the value. So it would also be accessible from the device as well. Something that I found out by accident is that this is not telling you the full truth. So the object you get back is not only a settable value, it also implements the interface of setting, which is absolutely not obvious if you look at that description here and it's also not told in the text and this gives you much more functionality as well so you have the option to enable or disable such a setting you can also show or hide it yeah i think that's all to know about settings and in the next part of the tutorial we will finally move on to java and do some real development and until then write some funky code